Hey everyone, God bless you and a blessed feast of the exaltation of the precious and life-giving cross on this 14th of September. My thoughts today I'd like to entitle The Dimensions of God's Love. And I'd like to persuade you about how loved you and the whole world is by the Lord God. This Feast of the Cross bears witness to this. The sign of the cross stirs the hearts of all believers with the remembrance, the ever-present reality of God's love for man, most chiefly expressed in the precious cross itself. St. John of Kronstadt reflects upon the cross. I'd like to read you a beautiful word from him. He says, It's impossible to represent and think of the cross without love. Where the cross is, there is love. In church, you see crosses everywhere and on everything. In order that everything should remind you that you are in the temple of the God of love, the temple of love crucified for us. Isn't that true? If someone would come to my parish and they would walk into the sacred temple, they would see as they're coming in all the crosses on the domes, seven of them. They would be immediately uh, presented with the cross everywhere in the shape of the church itself in the shape of the baptismal font, on the capitals of all the pillars, on the top of the iconostas, enthroned upon the altar, on top of the kivuklian, on the priest's vestments, around everyone's neck, everywhere you look, the cross of our Savior, our true boast. You know, the dimensions of God's love are set forth in the cross. And learning to plumb the depths of the dimensions of God's love is what produces mature, stable, fearless Christians. It's God's love that buoys us to pray with confidence. It's God's love that keeps us in peace and without fear in our veil of tears. St. Paul says something very beautiful with regards to the dimensions of God's love. In his epistle to the Ephesians in chapter 3, let me read it to you. This is what St. Paul says. He says, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in the inner man, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, here we go, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. Do you hear that? What a marvelous pastor's heart. He's praying for his people to be rooted and grounded in love. He's praying on his knees that his people, that the faithful, Christian believers would know the dimensions of God's love for them, that they would know how deep is God's love. When they see the lower bar of the cross and they remember how God spanned the heavens, literally how his only begotten son, who is always in the bosom of his father, bowed low, not just to look at us, but to become us, to take flesh to himself, our weakness, and to heal it, to live with us here. We think of the reality that he didn't just come down to earth, but he actually descended into Hades. He went into the darkest depths of human misery and brought his light and his love and salvation. We think of the upward bar of the cross and the height to which the love of God has transported humanity most graphically witnessed in the resurrection of our Savior, and then 40 days later in his glorious ascension, taking our very humanity, the very dust, redeemed dust of the earth, and planting it there at the right hand of his Father. This is our future. He didn't just descend so low in his love. Love compels us to bow low. And he demonstrates that. The Lord Christ demonstrates that most of all. He who came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many, and then to take us up with him 
delivering us from the grip of death, from the bondage to Satan and to the, from the tyranny of our sins, bringing us up into freedom and up into paradise. Think of the, the breadth of his love when you see the, the bars of the cross that go to the left and to the right, embracing not just the Jews, not just this tribe or that person, but every man and woman, every child, from every tribe, tongue, and nation. Christ has come for us all. He's come to gather us all. There is no uh, situation in life, there is no misery that we've brought ourselves that is too deep for the depth of his love. And there is no place too far away that his embrace cannot grab us. Knowing the dimensions of God's love, dear ones, this is the path to confident, faith-filled Christian living. And on this Feast of the Cross, this beautiful day, September 14th, I wish you a wonderful, joyful feast. And I pray that you also might be rooted and grounded in the love of Christ, which is celebrated every time we take the cross out. Kiss it, bow down, blow before it, and give thanksgiving to God for loving you like he does. God be with you. Patristic Nectar Publications is pleased to present a five-part lecture series by Father Josiah Trenum, entitled, Sirach, Fashioning a Life of Wisdom. The Wisdom of Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, as the book is known in the Western or Latin tradition, is a choice composition from the wisdom literature of the Old Testament, written in the second century BC in Hebrew, and translated into Greek by the author's grandson in Alexandria, Egypt, this majestic portion of Holy Scripture combines the rich aphorisms of traditional Hebrew sapiential literature with the concerns and background of second century Hellenic culture. Jesus, the son of Sirach, was highly prized by the church fathers from the earliest days of the church. In these five lectures, Father Josiah hones in on the themes of learning and seeking wisdom humility, work, wealth, almsgiving, friendship, social life, wives, women, medicine and physicians, youth and aging, and wise speech and the power of words. In these topical lectures, practical substance is given to the practice of the fear of God in a wide array of human activity so that the servant of God may please the Lord and live thoroughly and thoughtfully before him. For these and other available lectures, please visit our website at patristicnectar.org.